welcome you to Milestone Church. We're in our series Dream House, and as you could tell, our format today is a little different. A couple years ago, our team said, would you guys be willing to come up here and do a little Q&A? And as Pastor Steve mentioned, it's become one of our most popular moments and weekends of the year. So we want to thank you again for being willing and courageous to come into an environment like this. We found a lot of times in this subject matter, people like a conversational approach, less principles and more kind of here's where I'm at. Can you speak to it? Can you help me? So we want to say thank you guys so much for doing that again this year. Well, we stumbled onto this format, and uh, then we saw where it was one of our most downloaded uh, messages as right. people loved hearing the different topics, hearing answers, and um, I've, I've grown to love it because it's a, it's a relational way to include so right. many of you. In fact, I want to welcome those watching online as well, but um, I know people come to a series like this and we're all at different places in the journey. All of us are growing, developing, and then some of us are in a challenging place sure. and we feel a little intimidated. Already in these, uh, this series, I've met some people who said, uh, one gentleman who said, you know, I just, I felt like they're inside the church is this conversation going on that I'm totally on the outside of. It's just an inner conversation. And I love this topic because it's what we care about and it's a way for us uh, to really include some people. I understand there's people with blended families. They've had the challenges of divorce. There's people that are single wondering if they'll ever be married. There's, there's people at all different phases, and we just want you to know uh, that you're part of the conversation, and we're not presenting ourselves as the ones who have it all together. In fact, how much I love you and how much I want to include you is I'm willing to get in front of all these people and let my wife have a microphone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on now, show some love to your pastor, you know what I'm saying? Now, what I am going to say, any negative thing she describes is all theory. It's not based on actual <laughs> events. All theoretical. It's not based on real material, okay? Right. So uh, anyway, we, we love uh, helping people in this area, so we're willing to to answer the questions. It's great. And we're going to try and cover a range of topics because like you said, people are at all different places. And Brandy, these questions came from email to the church. They came from social media. They came from our pastoral care. So I thought we'd just jump right in and start tackling a few of these. Here's the first one. What causes growth or health in a marriage? Do you have to agree with whose fault it is? And do you have to, do both people have to see things the same way? Well, that's, a, that's kind of a big question. Um, you know, let's start with, um, just start from the beginning. You know, actually, when I saw the series named Dream House, I don't know how many of you girls uh, are kids of the 80s like I am, but the first thing I thought of was the Barbie Dream House. Did anybody else in here have the Barbie Dream House? Yeah. And I mean, and it was so dreamy because back in the day, I mean, they had elevators, you know, that went up and down and Barbie and Ken had the pink convertible and their hair was always perfect. And I mean, it was, you know, it was just amazing. And we all as little girls, especially dream about what our life is going to look like. And, um, and usually, you know, it may differ a little bit, but it usually includes some basic things like Ken. And um, I got my Ken right here. <laughs> yeah. he, did, the hair. he did have perfect <laughs> hair when we got married, <laughs> but, um, but I love his bald hair too. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, but you know, it may be a, maybe a career, maybe some adorable kids. And, and so we think about what, you know, what our dream house is going to look like. And then we wonder when, when we kind of get that and we feel like, why does our dream house struggle? And it, the, the problem is the dream house takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And we see a story, a princess story, and, and they get married. And that's when we think that's our happily ever after. But the happily ever after comes with some challenges. And it's how we're going to work those things out, and, you know, depending on how happily our ever after is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think your challenges, and we all have them. You may look at somebody and you think, man, if I could just have a marriage like them, if we could just do it like they do it. Let me just tell you, whoever they, they have challenges, mm -hmm. okay? But your challenges can do one of two things. They can either motivate you to serve more, to love more, to grow. Or they can discourage you and say, you know what, I'm done with this, I just want to quit. Mm -hmm. And today I hope you'll come with the mindset of, we have challenges, but I want it to motivate me to love more, serve more, to grow in my faith and in my walk with Christ and in my marriage. And so that's where we're going to come from. You know, I had a very dreamy picture of marriage. I always kind of wanted to be a wife and a mom. And, and I thought, I've got this. Mm. Like, I'm sweet. So this is going to work <laughs> out really good. 
I mean, <laughs> when you're an only child, there's nobody to tell you you're not sweet. So you're right. left to yourself to say, yeah, I, I'm a nice person. And I mean, I have my Southern manners and I say, please and thank you. And yes, ma'am and no, ma'am. And I mean, I'm like, I'm a nice person. And then I got married to my dream man and I'm starting my dream life. And the problem is in the beginning, it just wasn't that dreamy. <laughs> because I was madly in love with him, but I was more mad than anything for the first little <laughs> while because the person that you love the most can make you madder than anybody on the planet. Right. Am I right? Sure. Yes. So, I mean, I just, I, I thought I was a nice person, but I realized I was more of a stubborn, independent, I think I'm right and I'm waiting for you to figure it out kind of person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he thought he was right. And so there, there came the problem. Right. And so you start thinking, what are we going to do? Because, you know, we had to learn how to communicate, um, what our needs were, what our, and, and how to live together. And I just, I remember there would be things, you know, just part, part of the thing that you loved about them when you got married is the thing that aggravates you. You know, the fact that he's spontaneous and fun loving and all of that was one of the things I really loved about him, even though I'm more of a planner, you know, as he said last weekend and all of that. But that's all great right up until you work 10 hours. And this is, mind you, before normal people had cell phones, right? So there was no cell phone. You work 10 hours, you come home, and he's brought 15 of his college buddies over for dinner. <laughs> and you're like, I don't even have groceries. What are you doing? Did you see all the laundry out on the couch? Oh, my gosh, they're going to think I'm a mess. And he's like, baby, this is clean for them. This, they're they're yeah. used to the dorm. They're good. <laughs> what? That just blew our whole grocery budget for the week, you know? Yeah. And, and then you just, oh, and then there's these little things, and they just start getting. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, okay, I wanted my happily ever after to look happy. So what am I going to do to not feel the same way? Because here I was, I thought I was a composed, sweet person. And I felt like throwing myself on the ground at days, you know, just stomping my feet and kicking and screaming because I just was so aggravated, right? And I thought, what am I going to do for it to look happy in 20 years? I don't want to still be feeling like this, you mm -hmm. know? And so the Lord just spoke to me and he said, you've got to change. I'm like, well, what about him? He needs to change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right? And the Lord said, what are you going to do if he never changes to have a happy marriage in 20 years? And I was like, okay. So I had to start making some choices. Things I didn't necessarily feel like doing, but things I knew that, that God was calling me to do. Like instead of demanding my own way or staying up and fighting it out, and I was all about the staying up and fighting it out. There was no going to sleep on our anger, just mm -hmm. FYI. That we were going to stay up all night if we needed to. But it was like, why don't you just forgive and let the matter drop? Why do you have to keep pushing it? Why do you have to have your way? Why can't you prefer him? And it was just like the Lord kept saying, just do the right thing. I didn't always feel like doing the right thing because our emotions can lead us mm -hmm. astray. But it was a conscious choice to say, okay, I'm gonna do the right thing no matter how I feel. And that was hard and challenging at times. But I remember as I started doing that, it's amazing how without saying a word, he started changing. Mm -hmm. Because it's really amazing how the line of communication between him and God could clear up when I wasn't constantly chirping in his ear, mm. right? He could hear God a lot more clearly when I wasn't there all the time, telling him what he needed to be doing. And so, you know, God started doing a work. He started changing both of us. And so I encourage you when you say, well, how do you flourish in your home? You know, you have to change. And you say, gosh, I hope my spouse is listening to this today. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you, I'm not talking to your spouse. Because you're the only one that you can change and you're the only one that you can control. Mm -hmm. So the best way to come into a series like this is to say, okay, God, what do you want to say to me? Because I'm the only one I can do anything about. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the greatest strategy of the enemy is to get us fighting against each other instead of for each other. Mm -hmm. And I remember early on in our marriage when all this was going on, I, I wish I remembered who it was, they gave us a scripture and they told us this one little bit of wisdom and it's from James and it's James 3, 16 and 17. And it says, for where you have envy or selfish ambition, which also in other versions is called strife. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you know what strife is in your home. Then you find disorder in every evil practice. Mm. Isn't that wild? And they said, it's like when you're fighting and you've got strife going on and you're demanding your own way and saying you've got to have, what you're doing is like opening the door and saying, come on in, devil. Come on in, letting the enemy in, rule and reign in our house. 
And let me just tell you, you've got too much coming against you in this world and in your marriage to begin with without inviting the enemy in to come and rule and reign in your house. Good. You know, Jeff talked last week about, you know, by wisdom a house is built. And you say, well, what is wisdom? Well, I love that that verse goes on, not to just say, well, this is what happens if you have strife. This is wisdom that comes from above is first of all pure, peace-loving, which is the opposite of strife causing, mm-hmm. right? So we love peace, considerate of other people, submissive, uh-oh, mm-hmm. full of mercy, good fruit, impartial and sincere. So I encourage you today when you say, Brandy, we got a lot of challenges to overcome, that you let it motivate you. That's how you flourish. That's how you flourish. You say, well, do you have to agree on whose fault it is? Mm -hmm. I say you just own it. Own your part. You can only do what you can do. So you own it and you set the tone as far as it it depends on you. You set the tone in your home, right? And you just own it. So good. And that's, you said it so nice, but (laughs) but that could be difficult to say, you know, listen, I'm just going to do what I can do and focus on that. I, I think Pastor Jeff, a lot of the times, here's our second question. Most of us realize that healthy communication is critical, but so many of these challenges come from our inability to talk with each other. What can we do practically to get better in this vital area of our relationships? Well, we got so much feedback from last week where I talked about the speed of life and the pace of life affecting communication. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, Communication is generally the starting place of the breakdown, right. and it's it's and then there's a wedge, and then there's a polarization that begins to happen and hurt, and mm-hmm. all of the things that, that. And so, if you go to a pastor or a counselor, they're going to try to talk to you, no matter where you're at in your challenges, or even if you're wanting to get better and have a greater level of intimacy. They're going to talk to you about communication. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times if there's a major breach, maybe write a letter to the other person because you're able to say in that things that you're challenged in, your ability to say verbally. And so communication is a big deal. I, I just thought maybe just a little bit deeper look at that uh, could be helpful if you ask about communication. Right. Um, the, there, the fact is you generally marry someone that communicates very different than you. Right. One, you have just the male-female thing, but you right. also have just the, the differences of personality. And so um, and the way I had you were to, raised. And, and the way you're raised, your background. I, I grew up in a home where, you know, you just let it all hang out. You know, if you feel it, you did. just throw it out there. Let's all just, you know, hey, let it, let it go. You know, why, oh, why yes. hold it back? I, I remember when we were dating and I went to his home for the first time and all the siblings were there and somebody said something and then it spurred something else on and then it was like, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. it. <laughs> Loud talk about it. And I'm like, oh, what, what are y'all doing? Why are y'all fighting? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, we're not fighting, we're just talking about it. And I'm like, we called that fighting in my house growing up. We didn't do that. I mean, we would like, somebody said something that kind of irked you and you just held it against them for a few weeks. <laughs> until enough stuff, until enough stuff had accumulated that you could throw it all at them at once yeah. and get it out. Then you were better for a while and then you just kept everything in again, you know. So I was like, y'all just don't do that to me, okay? Yeah, so yeah. There's, there's, generally, <laughs> there's generally assertive type people um, that, that, that get communication, and that's really the positive that you want to have is where you, you value your opinion, you value, I value my opinion, and so I, in a healthy way, have an assertive communication, meaning I value you, and we begin to talk about it. But there's, there's these unhealthy patterns that cause us to not do that, right? You have an aggressive communicator, the, the dominant personality in the relationship. I had to learn this when Brandy and I first got married that she would, she would shut down sometimes if I just emotionally was so much stronger and I, I wanted her to be able to engage. So there's, a, there's an aggressive communication. There's passive communication, which is very dangerous if you're, if you're passive too. Aggressive is wrong if you're trying to be the one who's right and take over, but passive is just as dangerous. Uh, where you're like, it's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. Fine. it's fine. Yeah, whatever. And it's totally not fine. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. whatever, whatever you want. So you take the martyr complex, and you're typically, when you're a passive communicator, you're picking up on offenses and insecurities that are not always there, okay? So you're thinking they meant this and they meant that. And then the worst thing is What's very common, this will help you in your business relationships, in your family, in general, very common, and this is so unhealthy, passive-aggressive. Right. Passive-aggressive is saying, I'm fine, it's not a big deal, all the while you're taking on those offenses and later there's an aggressive posture. 
And so I would, I would encourage you, no matter where you're at, to begin to step out and value uh, the other person. I mean, we've lost that a little bit today. Sure. To even have disagreements but still value the other person in terms of communication and where they're coming from. So communication is a, is a big deal, and it's something we all continue to grow in. Sure. I think when you see the communication breakdown, a lot of times happens from pain or hurt feelings yeah. or offense or a breach of trust. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to say too that on behalf of those of you who sent in questions, to thank you for your courage and your willingness to be honest. We got some really pretty intense ones where a marriage is in crisis because of a major trust breach. And most people realize at some level that the biblical response is to forgive, but that can be really difficult. This is one of the questions we got. She said, my husband had an affair. He's sorry, but I don't think he's repented. I found photos on his phone, and it opens up the wound all over again. Is it possible to forgive him, and what choice do I have? Yeah, you know, that's a tricky question because there's, there's different answers. I mean, there's several different answers that could apply, right? Mm -hmm. And it sounds like what she's wanting is just a solution, just a quick solution. Tell me, should I divorce him? Should I stay? Mm -hmm. Right? And um, do you have biblical grounds for divorce when there's been adultery? Well, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Is it the best option? I don't always think so. Um, but it is an option. Right. Um, and then there's like, well, or we could just stay together and I could just keep doing what I'm doing, but I don't trust him. I don't think he's really repented. I mean, this breach of trust has happened. And now I still, you know, I find just pictures on his phone. And so now it's kind of ripped that wound mm -hmm. back open. And so do we just keep doing what we're doing? Or could you just tell me if it's okay to divorce? And I think that sometimes sure. that's what you're wanting is the quick solution. But I would like to say that maybe there's an option three. Mm -hmm. And not always, but I do think sometimes there is, is to where we're not just looking for a resolution to like, okay, let's, because there's never really a resolution. Yeah. Even if you get divorced, you're together forever right. when you have children, right? There's still, mm -hmm. there's still a connection. But what if we said, okay, we've kind of been doing this without God for a while. But what if we said, what if we start using God's pattern and start over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to where now what we're going to do is we're going to have to set some parameters because there have been some hurts, there have been some brokenness, there's been some sin patterns and all of that. We're going to set some parameters and we're going to have to reestablish some trust. Mm -hmm. But what if we actually don't just kind of go to church, but we attend and get plugged into a church, get in a small group where we actually have friends that are rooting for our marriage, that are holding us accountable, that there's a man that can hold my husband accountable to say, hey, how have you been doing with looking at that stuff and that inappropriate content on your phone? How are you doing with mm -hmm. loving your wife and, and, and reestablishing trust and making her feel valued? Um, getting involved in Restore, which we have on Monday nights, mm -hmm. that helps break some of those sin patterns and getting with a group of people that can help you walk through that. You know, I think more than resolution or quick fix, it's really about a revelation of, are we gonna do this God's way? It's good. Now, I know that some, some situations are beyond help. There's partners that just don't wanna do that. But I would say, if you and your spouse are willing, that today, if you would say, okay, we're gonna just say, let's just give it a try and try to do it God's way and get connected to people that can hold us accountable and help us succeed. And if today you are struggling with that and you're the man in that situation, I would just encourage you. It really has to be a revelation that you would rather take that smartphone, that iPad, that computer and smash it to bits and throw it in the deepest lake before you would break up your family, hurt your wife or your children. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? That's those images, those things that are addictive, they don't deliver on what they mm -hmm. promise. They're not sitting with you when you're old and gray, in your rocking chairs, when your kids are home, coming home for Christmas. They just don't deliver. And it really is a revelation to say, I would rather throw all of that away for what really matters in my life. So good. I think that's such a good answer because as, as pastors, you know, and I know our pastoral team mm -hmm. or counselors or even as friends, mm -hmm. there's, these are complex situations right. and there, there's, some, there's some biblical instruction. Right. But a lot of times people are like, just Give me the technique. Give me the answer. Right. Give me what I'm supposed to do. And I love what you're saying about revelation because it, without the supernatural power of God, there, there, there's not a dream house marriage, no matter where it's at, right. in deep crisis or sure. kind of floating right now. Right. It's, it's with the supernatural power of God. And my heart goes out to, I, I've met probably 10 couples already, just, just shake hands with them or, or, or individuals mm -hmm. who say, we're separated, we're in trouble, we're in crisis. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I want you to know we're praying for you in this series. And um, the reality is, I mean, we, we believe that without God's transforming power, that at the end of the day, none of us really make it to where God has so for good. us. And so, so, so we're praying for a revelation. It's really helpful. Brandy, I wanted to ask, you, you were given such great insight there on the third option and creating yeah. some boundaries because trust has been violated. Can you speak a little bit to this concept of forgiveness? I think sometimes people feel like a doormat, like if I just go back and forgive, they're just going to keep taking advantage of me. Right. Well, forgiveness is, is not an option because it's not for that other person. Forgiveness is for you and your health. It's good. The Bible actually commands us to forgive because, they, because God knows if you hold that resentment, you hold that bitterness, you hold that anger, it poisons you. Mm-hmm. The other person's going on with their life. Mm-hmm. And what happens is you take all of that if you don't get it resolved and you don't forgive and let the matter drop and you take it into your next relationship. That person can be gone, but you'll take all of that into your next relationship and transfer it to the next person. Mm -hmm. So it is so important that you forgive. And it's important if you have kids too that they see you forgive. It's good. And and show them healthy patterns as well. That's really helpful, clarifying. Well, Pastor Jeff, we touched on it a little bit in that question, but I want to go a little bit further. One of the biggest issues traditionally men struggle with, and it's often difficult and awkward to talk about for the sake of kids or our public setting. We're just going to call it inappropriate visual content. But the data shows now that it's not just a man issue. It's not just for men. That it's an issue for women, and it's an issue for, certainly for teenagers, young adults. Talk to us a little bit about this area, and what can practically people do to get help? Well, it's, it's, it's a massive challenge in our generation. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a challenge, mm-hmm. inappropriate uh, type views on these things mm-hmm. and inappropriate actions, but it's, it's massively it challenging is. today. Uh, we're being inundated with it as pastors. Young mm-hmm. people, if you're not involved with your young person in terms of what they are viewing on devices and computers and screens, then you should get involved now. True, Because they don't even have to go looking for it. They don't have to go looking for it. it, Those of us that are a little older, you had to get some material that somebody's dad had or some kind of thing that you, I mean, you know, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. (laughs) I'm I'm speaking out of theory. Yeah, (laughs) purely Uh, hypothetical. Yeah. (laughs) Now it's right there. Right. These kids, I'm telling you, they've got it so challenging. And then all of us, and I'll tell you, as from working with men, specifically sure. and discipling men, I've been really amazed at the amount of just the cultural perspective today where guys right. would be like, why is this a problem? Right. Well, again, there's physical challenges related to that. It's, I mean, statistics are showing that it literally is changing even the physical dynamic mm-hmm. of, of who we are. Uh, there's, there's just the enemy only deceives, so the deception continues down a path that leads you to places you never thought you would go, just like with anything that's of the enemy. Right. And so it's, it's literally can rewire the brain. With physical drugs, there's a need for, for more. In this area, there's a need for different, mm-hmm. which can lead you just down, down terrible places, and it, and it breaches the relationship, trust relationship. It just sure. destroys God's plan. Um, I was at a, a dinner with a guy celebrating 50 years in ministry. His name's Josh McDowell. He wrote the book More Than a Car- Carpenter, Million Books mm-hmm. Sold. He's been a great um, defender of the faith and works with young people, and I was invited and I, I, by a friend of mine, found myself sitting at the table, and he leans in kind of to the table and says, the greatest threat to the church. Of course, I'm all ears, you know, right. because Jesus is building his church, and the answer is Jesus for all of us, so I'm listening, and he said, this, this issue, this issue is our greatest threat because it erodes the very fabric of the way God builds culture, society, life, and family. And he said, it is our issue. In fact, he said, there's enough people doing apologetics, which is defense of the faith. I'm dedicating the rest of my ministry life to deal with this issue. And so I I wanna just give you some practicals. Number one, you you have to define what beauty is. Mm -hmm. Is it that fake image that's not really real? Um, People ask me, you know, what are you into? Redheads, brunettes? I'm into this. Mm -hmm. This is my standard of beauty. So I have to, you, you have to mentally say, this is what is beautiful to me. 
in, as Brandy said, you might need to get some accountability, some filters, That's get good. some kind of search process that allows for sharing. Do some practical things to get help. We have some groups now that are having, there's some people getting some great success uh, in that area. We have some freedom groups starting this fall that you should consider mm -hmm. becoming part of. Um, the fact is, if you want to be free, there's help out there, right. and I would encourage you to take some bold steps uh, so that it doesn't erode things that really matter. That's, that's so helpful. I think a lot of times in that particular issue, people feel like they're all alone, no one would understand, no one else is facing this. And what you're saying is, we get it, and there's hope, and you could win in that area. Yeah. Well, Brandy, uh, this question is going to sound familiar. We get it every year. It's among our most common question from wives. What do I do when my husband struggles or refuses to be the spiritual leader in our home? Right. Yeah. You know, we, you know, as women at some level, no matter, you know, how strong we feel, we still want our husband to rise up and right. love our family, lead our family and all of that. And, and it's hard because when we feel like they're not doing that, what we want to do is be like, why don't you just lead our family? You know? <laughs> and, and so you start talking to him down. And it's interesting how we start thinking, you know, what we, what we want the most, we're actually doing the most detriment to. Mm -hmm. So we, we get this principle with our kids. You know, you, people tell you all the time if, you know, you're always telling your kids they're stupid, they never, never amount to anything, that they'll rise up and meet all of your expectations. Mm -hmm. Yet when we are in a marriage relationship, it's what we do constantly. You're just such a loser. you never home. You don't do anything. You don't help me around the house. You think I'm doing everything and you just don't have to do anything. And you're lazy. And if you worked harder, we'd be able to do more. And, you know, and you just, you start talking to him like that. Yet you expect him to come home and act like Romeo or Prince Charming. <laughs> but the fact is, he doesn't even want to come home mm. because of the way we're talking to him. You know, the Bible says, and this is the Bible, so don't get mad at me. It's better to live on the corner of a roof than in a house with a quarrelsome wife. Whoa. Ooh, that's, You're not going to find that on Pinterest. No. Yeah, that never, gonna, that's not going to make a Facebook no. post. I've never gone into a home and seen that on the wall, like right yeah. there in the house. <laughs> People don't celebrate that. But it's the Bible. It's true, right? So what we want is a husband that loves us and leads us, but we're doing everything. They said if they'd rather go live on the corner of the roof than right. come home and fight all the time or being told what they're not. So maybe try a new, a new thing to where you say, you know what, I'm going to start calling out of my husband what God sees in him. I'm going to think about what drew us together in the first place. Mm. I'm going to tell him, baby, I love you. I'm so glad you're my husband. I'm so glad you're the father of my children. You're looking good. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> yeah. good. I feel it. I'm so thankful that you go to work every day to provide for us. And I'm so thankful that we get to do this life together. And, and you start just talking to him. And I'm so glad that you're leading our home. I'm so glad that you're a man of God. I'm so glad. And you say, well, am I lying? You know, you want me to start lying? I'm like, no, you're calling out their potential. It's good. You're calling out their potential. What God sees in them. <laughs> But I've never seen a man that's wife believes so much in him that he just doesn't want to rise up a little bit it's and true. meet that. Say, no, I don't want to be any of those things. I just want to be a loser. It's true. You don't see that. If you tell him that he's amazing, he wants to be amazing. Yeah. And so you start calling that out. You give him a little respect. Guys well, like respect. Pastor Jeff, I want you to go a little bit deeper because I think guys hear that sometimes. Spiritual leader. What, I'm supposed to be that, but I don't even really know what that is. Can you practically help yeah. us? I mean, to be honest... Men will not admit it, but that's one reason they're a little hesitant to jump in to relationships, accountability, mm -hmm. church, all of that. Are, that that's scary terms because men want to move toward what they feel successful at. Right. And we, they feel intimidated by being a spiritual leader. Sure. So, so what is that? Let me help some of you. If you're like, what does that really mean? And of course, everyone's on a journey. You don't arrive in this right. area. But I think the first step is is having understanding for the person you're leading. You have, to, you have to understand. Leadership is about serving the people that you're leading. It's not about being over. It's about actually providing a climate and an atmosphere for them to reach their highest potential. So if you're going to do that, you have to understand who you're leading. And this right. is why the Bible ties other areas of leadership to the home leadership. That's good. Because the, the, the breakdown, this is my number one teammate right here. Mm -hmm. 
how she is doing is a real reflection of my leadership at the end of the day. Not how many deals I close, not how many big success stories that I have. How she's doing is a real reflection of my true leadership. Okay. And so I have to, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's true. And so so I have to understand her. And the problem is we as men, we marry this complex person. And it's like, I spend a lot of time when I'm discipling guys, a lot of times going, okay, here's what she's saying. He's like, uh. But on that, uh, but on that note, women, don't be overly complicated. Don't make it that hard to no, for your but man still, to figure you out. So the breakdown yes. in communication, I mean, yes. maybe there's a letter or there's a this or she's saying this or I don't understand that. So the guys a lot of times does not compute, you know, where's the ball, you know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> squirrel. Okay, look, look, step up a little bit, okay? Yeah, it's good. You can figure this out. You yeah. figure everything else out. Right. And so understand her a little bit. I love this passage of scripture. It's so good. If you're thinking about being a better spiritual leader in the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives, treat your wife with understanding as you live together, begin to understand her, the the differences between men and women, some of, of which God put there his pattern, his principles, no matter how many people today want to have all this discourse and dialogue about how God's changed his mind, he still has some of the same basic things for men and women. And he says here, in fact, for us as men, we need to understand our wives, give them honor. And it actually says, men, you're praying for that business deal. You're praying. I'm just going back to the word. It gives a little section there about how, how she's made different than you. You're praying for that child, and you feel like, man, I say some prayers on my way to work, but I don't feel like it's going higher than the car roof. It says, learn how to do this so your prayers are not hindered. It's good. That's the word of God. So your prayers are not hindered. Spend a little energy understanding her. There's some differences in in men and women. Mm -hmm. So she wants communication, and some of this is specific to our relationship. She likes alone time with me us moving into this new building, some of the schedule things we've had recently. After 20-something years of marriage, we've realized there could be some, some tension. There we could feel a little bit of separation. And so we've had to take some intentional time right. for communication, not just being together, but to communicate. Honey, how are you doing? Understanding she's different than me, change, all of that. So, so she needs some communication. She needs affection without intentions pure snuggle <laughs> pure snuggle does not compute with me but she needs it okay come on man can I have it you're like I finally understood something at church <laughs> yeah. praise God they're finally preaching here where I can get it oh gone it I understand that guy okay Amen. yeah there you go Hold on, we ain't getting Pentecostal. But. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but 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 she right. needs that that affection. I love you. You're beautiful, and she needs mm-hmm. to know that with all the goals I have set, that our family is a priority to me. It's really important. She needs to know that that is a priority to me. I I need from her some things that are different. Why does Brandy keep talking about this, ladies? Your husband needs respect. Mm-hmm. He'll move away from an environment where he feels disrespected mm-hmm. and devalued. He'll move toward environments where he feels respect. Yeah. Um, men need, they, they need that physical intimacy. They need the enjoyment of life. They don't, when that passive aggressive thing happens, then it, it actually separates him. Mm-hmm. So, so they, they want you to participate in life with them. And, and that's not an exhaustive list, but just a sure. few ideas. Spiritual leadership. If you don't, the number one bit of advice, start trying to understand her, honor her. But if you don't know how to do it, one of the best things to do is start getting around some people that do. Yeah. We have couples in this church that believe God placed them here to build up a legacy in the next generation. If you're a young couple, we have couples here that would love to help. They're not perfect. We have men's development groups. We have small groups. We have environments here that can help you be around some people that could, could teach you really what it means to be a spiritual leader in your home. So practical. That's what we do in every area of life. If you don't know how to do something, you get around somebody who's doing it right. Yeah. Well, as we're getting ready to close here, I have a few more questions. I thought maybe we'd go a little speed round, yeah. maybe an answer, a, a sentence or two for each of these. Here's one. Uh, if you're single again, how do you know when it's the right time to start dating and do the same principles apply? 
You know, I would say if you're single again, and you know, how do you know if it's the right time? I think it's when you know that you and God are okay on your own. That you don't, you're not looking for somebody to make you feel better about yourself. That you're not looking for somebody for that um, affirmation or to Mm -hmm. feel complete. But that you know that in God you are complete. Mm -hmm. Because if you're looking for someone else to make you happy, you'll never be happy. Mm -hmm. And so when you really can feel like I am okay where I'm at, then you probably are able and in a good place to find someone else. Sure. And did the same principles apply? I would say even more so. Yeah, it's good. Even more so. It's really good. Not, not that you base everything on statistics, but statistics say, I love to tell people this. They're like, well, I'm finally rid of this person. Now I'm ready, you know, right. I'm single and ready to mingle, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, statistics say you'll repeat the same pattern and you'll right. jump into an unhealthy relationship. So back to the God factor of getting God's pattern before you just jump back into something. That's else. so good. That's yeah. so good. Cause there's such a cultural consensus of the right way to do it, which is this next question. The person says the young people in my workplace don't get why it's a bad idea to live together before you're married. They ask, why do you need a piece of paper saying you're married? Well, it's the, the, the cultural perspective is typically opposite from God's perspective. Mm-hmm. And so culturally, it's not a big deal. There's no stigma attached. A lot of people do it for various reasons, sure. fear of the commitment. Uh, maybe they think it's not a big deal, financial reasons that right. people do it. Uh, my question is not, what does the culture say? My question is, what does God bless? Right. right. What does God bless? What does God look at and go, I'm going to bless that because it's according to my principles Mm -hmm. and God does not bless it. Anything outside of a man and a woman in a covenantal marriage relationship, Mm -hmm. that's God's standard and he's not changing it anytime soon. Sure. That's really good. Well, let's say this one, Brandy, kind of comes right on the heels of that. Here, here's someone who said, I've heard Christians say all sins are the same. If that's true, why do they focus so much on sexual sin and isn't that a little weird? It can seem weird. It can seem like you're just picking on one sin, right? But the thing is, all sin separates us from God. So it's not like sexual sin separates us from God any more than any other sin. But the consequences are different. Mm -hmm. You know, sins have different consequences. And the Bible says we're actually sinning against our own bodies. And that comes with different consequences. Sure. That's helpful. Okay, last one. Uh, You mentioned finances. Here's a financial question. Social media has made it hard, especially for young couples, because they see everyone else with nicer homes and more elaborate vacations. They're tempted to live beyond their means, which creates great financial stress. How do we help them? Well, we have the blessing of affluence that helps us uh, to be able to make an impact. And so it's not a negative thing necessarily, but I think we have to have wisdom with the affluence of our generation, mm-hmm. we can cha- which can change the dynamic of the expectations on young couples as they start out in marriage. Right. Mm-hmm. And because they've grown up in an atmosphere, they think that they're supposed to have Right. when they first get married, what it took their parents 25 or 30 years right. and a whole lot of hard work and sacrifice to get. Good. Um, and so I'm passionate about pre-marriage counseling, by the way, too. This is, this is outside of Jesus. It's probably the second most important decision that sure. you'll ever make. And so uh, here we provide pre-marriage counseling. I've talked to some of you entering into it. I would say going through our stewardship ministry is almost an absolute must Good. if you're preparing for marriage. Good. Because you, this is one of the number one areas of breakdown is a lack of unity around finances. And the Bible has a whole lot to say about how God wants us to handle that area of our life so we can have peace. Good. But it can be really amazing. Like we think, gosh, I don't have enough, so we can't do this and this and this, what we see, other people's highlight reels. But really when you're first married, I mean, one of the best things you can do is dream together, save Good. together. Right. I mean, it's part of what builds you as a couple is saying, this is what we want to do. We have a goal out there and we're going to work as a team and save and, and then we're going to get to go and do this thing together. I mean, it's part of what helps you grow together yeah. as a couple. It's really so. practical. I, I want to thank the two of you for being so honest and courageous, giving us so much help. Will you give me a hand with them? For I know you guys, you're going to head out and uh, be available to connect. Would you stand on your feet with me? Pastor Jeff and Brandy will be out in the commons. But I thought we'd close our service with some prayer. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we're so grateful that this is more than technique. It's more than finding the right principles that work. God, we understand how deeply important this is to you. It's part of how you you made us and you framed us for healthy relationships. God, you don't build anything 
apart from the family. As we come today, uh, all across the spectrum, whether you're single and trusting God to do it the right way or, or, or you're single again, maybe, maybe you're in a marriage that's in crisis. Maybe you've been married for a long time and it's just starting to get cold and you're looking for a spark. Or maybe things are great, you just want to get better. Wherever you're at, I believe God's here to help us. Jesus, we're not just asking for technique or, or tools. God, we're asking for your presence and your peace. God, we want you to do what only you can do in our homes. Would you bring your, your power? You, would you bring your ability to forgive, to, to see the other person the way that you see them? God, I'm praying for every person who's struggling and they feel like they've been forgotten or passed over or, or it'll never change. God, we pray that you'd give them hope, you'd give them encouragement, you'd give them their, your peace so that they could be who you've called them to be in this critical area of their lives. God, we pray that our marriages, our families, our homes would honor you and help people to see your goodness and love in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.